repeat what you think. What is up guys? Today is now day four of our daily December uploads here on my channel. If you are new to our channel, make sure you subscribe for more basketball and football content. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a like and suggest an idea for a future video. Now let's get started with what happened to Frank Jackson. Frank Jackson was born May 4, 1998 in Washington, D.C. Later, the Jackson family decided to pack things up and move from Oregon to Utah. Frank loved to play sports such as basketball, baseball, football, and even golf. His father knew his son would be special at a very young age. He would dominate kids on the blacktop and he was the better athlete compared to all of his peers. Frank grew up a Mormon and his faith was very important to him. He, he was a diehard BYU fan and he grew up going to multiple BYU basketball camps. Going into high school, he decided to solely focus on basketball and it ended up paying off for him. He would go to Lehigh High School for one year. His best performance was a 30 point game against Lone Peak High School, which is one of the best high schools in the state. After his freshman season, Frank not only decided to transfer to Lone Peak High School, but he'd also commit to play basketball at his dream school, BYU. While at Lone Peak, head coach Quincy Lewis helped Frank take his game to the next level. Frank had a stellar high school career, and by his senior year he had more offers and he decided it was best for him to decommit. Jackson said he had made a premature decision and he had interest from schools such as Utah, Stanford, and Arizona, but he had his eyes on something bigger. And so did Coach K. He had been interested in Frank and began to watch his AAU tournament games more, and later on in the year Coach K and two assistants decided to visit Frank and his family in Utah. From that eye on, Frank knew he'd be going to Duke. Frank would go on to become Utah's Mr. Basketball, a McDonald's All-American, and he also won the Powerade Jam Fest dunk competition. As a recruit, he was graded as a 5-star recruit, the number 13 player in the country, and the number 4 point guard in his class. Once again, Duke was projected to be really good. They brought back Grayson Allen, Luke Kennard, Matt Jones, and Emile Jefferson, alongside a top-rated recruiting class that included Harry Giles, Jason Tatum, Marquise Bolden, and Javin Delorier. Going into the season, Duke began ranked number one in the country and a heavy favorite to make it to the Final Four. For Jackson, he was unsure if he would start. It was going to be between him and senior Matt Jones. In Duke's first game against Maris, he shined. He had 18 points, 4 assists, and 4 steals, and Duke cruised to an easy win. In his next 7 games, Frank scored in double figures and became the unofficial leader of the team. After Frank suffered a foot injury, his numbers began to drop. In his next 16 games, he only scored in double figures 3 times and his role on the team was beginning to diminish. Frank would pick things back up in his final 9 games and Duke was looking good again. In 2016, Duke had huge wins over Michigan State, Rhode Island, Florida, Notre Dame, North Carolina, Virginia, and Florida State. They had an 11-7 record in the ACC and a 23-8 record overall. Going into the ACC tournament, they had struggled so far, but it would change. They would win against Clemson and then go on to beat Louisville, North Carolina, and Notre Dame to win the 2017 ACC tournament, and they significantly boosted their NCAA tournament resume. After their stellar postseason run, they were with the number 2 overall seed in the NCAA Tournament East region. They opened up the tournament with a blowout win over the number 15 seed Troy, but they had an unexpected test in the second round. They were set to play the number 7 seed South Carolina, and most people expected Duke to cruise. It looked like that was going to be the case at halftime, but South Carolina quickly changed the narrative. We were all wrong. South Carolina came out of halftime on a mission and got scorching hot from the field and ended up being Duke pretty easily. It turns out that not only would it be Duke's last game of the season, but it would also be Frank's. For the season, Jackson averaged 10.9 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 1.7 assists while shooting 54% from the field and 40% from deep. His career high game was a win against number 15 Florida State, where he had 22 points. Jackson was invited to the NBA Draft Combine and went from a safe bet to return to school to someone who should sign with an agent. He impressed teams in the 5-on-5 drills, had an impressive vertical leap, and he was said to have interviewed really well. He was listed anywhere from a late first round pick to an undrafted player. He ended up meeting in the middle and was taken with the first pick in the second round by the Charlotte Hornets, but his rights were immediately traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. Jackson's NBA career did not start out on a high note. He injured his foot and had surgery that would keep him off the court until January. Sadly, he had even more tough luck as he had to have surgery once again and he'd missed his entire rookie season. The injuries didn't go away though. He had a solid summer league debut, but he suffered a left ankle sprain and was out the rest of the summer league. He was back in time for the beginning of the season though. He ended up making his NBA debut that game and he played two minutes off the bench. Jackson's first real game came against the Memphis Grizzlies, where he scored 17 points in 19 minutes of play. A little less than a month later, Jackson scored a career-high 25 points in a win against the Spurs. Overall, Jackson played 61 games where he averaged 8.1 points, 1.1 assists, and 2.2 rebounds while playing 19 minutes a night. So far in 2019, Jackson is averaging 7.5 points, 1.5 rebounds, and 1 assist a night, but he is struggling mildly to shoot the ball. 
with the huge influx of young talent this offseason, Jackson will have his work cut out for him if he wants to have a major role with the Pelicans moving forward. He needs to work on his passing and three-point shooting if he wants his role to expand, but he is still young and has serious potential. Overall, I think Jackson will be a good role player his entire NBA career, but he will need some more time. I think he made the wrong decision leaving Duke as a freshman, but he's in the league and that's all that matters at this point. I wish Frank the best of luck for his career, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a like, and I'll see you guys tomorrow again for day 5.